Hi, everybody. Today I'm here with Dr. Nana Kosh. Um, I got to know her through a TED talk that I watched several months ago. And I really got inspired by her lecture and I, it really touched my heart. And at that point I said, I have to introduce her to all the Brazilian people. So, you, so today she's here and I'm so happy to, to have you here, Nana. And um, I would like you to talk, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you for number one. Thank you, Anna, for finding me and for inviting me to participate with you. Um, I have been a dance therapist for almost 50 years. And, um, and in that time, I've really seen the growth of the field um, in the United States, but most especially throughout the world, in, in Europe, um, in Central America, in South America, it's a very, it's really encouraging how much people are understanding the power of movement mm -hmm. to heal and to express our innermost experiences and our feelings. So um, it's really, it's been a very magical ex sort of journey for me, um, having started as a dance, as a, as a dancer, in, as a, a dance major in college, and not wanting to go into being a professional dancer, but finding the field of dance therapy in which I could work with people and help them to move into a more um, holistic sense of self, a more um, vital role for themselves in regards to expressing themselves and using themselves more in a more healthy, productive way. But through dance and through the power of movement, to really help to integrate emotional life, spiritual life, physical life in one totality. So um, my, my, my own career has taken a trajectory where I've worked with people from, who have varying degrees of disabilities or dysfunctions um, from working, starting to work um, from with, with children and young adults who had developmental delays because my training was with Lillian Espinac at the Flower Fifth Avenue Hospital, Mental Retardation Clinic of Flower Fifth Avenue Hospital back in the early 1970s. And I, so I went on to work with children with developmental delays. And then I started working at another facility years later um, with adolescents and people who had a range of addiction issues. Mm -hmm. um, and I also work with geriatrics. So with people who are who were institutionalized, but also people who are out um, in day programs. So I've worked with a gamut of people in my career, along with having a private practice um, for many years um, here in my home outside of New York City. Um, but the, the bulk of my career also has been, along with doing clinical work, being an educator. And I was really fortunate in 1980 to um, be invited to join the faculty at Hunter College Dance Movement Therapy Program. Uh, it's actually the Dance Movement Therapy Master's Program, which was the first master's program in the world, um, working with Claire Schmace and Alyssa White. And um, eventually I became the director of that program when Claire retired. Um, Hunter's program closed in the, the mid-1990s and and I um, ended up working um, in various uh, programs, uh, teaching dance therapy um, as an adjunct. But then I, for the last 17, 18 years, I, I was a professor at Long Island University, from which I retired in uh, 2018. So I'm a professor emerita there. But um, I taught actually in the health and phys ed department, but I taught dance therapy courses in the art therapy master's program. So I've, I've been involved as an educator and, and also um, very much teaching the work of Lillian Espinac, who was my mentor, um, around the world uh, because her work was really very pivotal in my way of seeing dance therapy in, its, um, in, 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 in a way that um, honors looking at where our tensions are in the body, understanding how to enliven and bring vitality as well as having a sense of social 
uh, connection to people, which is what dance really brings to us, vitality, social connection, social ability, um, a sense of the ability to be able to express ourselves through our bodies in the con in, as well as connecting what we're thinking, what we're feeling with how we're expressing it in our bodies. Mm -hmm. So I hope that sort of gives you a bit of an encapsulation of a bit of the trajectory of my career. Mm -hmm. Sounds wonderful. So I remember you said in the lecture that dance can solve lots of problems. Yes. <laughs> can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, I, I believe that I was, um, I was, was quoting um, James Brown, who said that dance, basically the dance could really help us to understand how to mobilize ourselves. So dance provides many opportunities. It provides the opportunity of socialization. You know, in, in, um, in my career, I've worked with many people who feel very isolated, very alienated from themselves and from society. And when they're dancing and moving together with another person in a rhythmic sense, in a way that they're con I'm connecting my rhythm with them, they're connecting their rhythm with me. They don't, people don't feel alo so alone anymore. You know, that we see that in our social dance, you know, when people are moving in concert with each other, in harmony with each other, there's often a sense of, of, um, of uplifting, a sense that we are connected. So dance brings us to a place of socialization. Dance, when we're with lots of other people, allows us to feel a sense of community. Um, dance allows us to express our aliveness, our sense of being in the world. It brings us joy. It brings us happiness. Um, it also allows us to express in whatever way we can our thoughts, our feelings, our likes, our dislikes, our, our sense of who we are. And, and you know, that we can go to the gym and feel great about being on the treadmill. Um, we can go to the gym and feeling great about lifting weights because anytime we move our bodies, we're actually engaging the chemical, the, the hormones in the brain that we call the feel good hormones, right? So it's, you know, it's, it's the endorphins, it's the dopamine, it's the serotonin that we're really stimulating. So we can do that in any way in terms of movement. But dance has something very different in the sense that it brings us, especially when we're moving with other people, it brings us to a place where we are connected, where we are socializing, where we are feeling a oneness with another person. And that sense of, of um, being in the social world, right? Uh, that sense of social feeling it gives us a sense that we are seen, that we're with another, that we're not alone. Mm -hmm. So dance is very special, different than just going to the gym or going running and being by yourself, which is not to say that if you're home and listening to, to music, that you can't be putting, especially these days when we're all sheltering in place, um, where we, I actually have a very close friend who turns on music every day and occasionally she'll send me videos of herself dancing, just feeling that sense of flow in the body, that sense of connection, the, the upper and the lower part of the body. You know, we can experience when we're moving to the rhythm of music and when we're moving in concert with our whole body that we are feeling grounded and centered. Yes, uh, and then, yes, as you said, dance, makes you feel like you belong to a group right yes. and and brings you connection to the others in the group and i remember you said also you work with groups and why it is important for like mental problem mental people with problems to work in a group so yes. tell us please why it is so important for these kind of people to work in a group well you know, when I, again, when I started my career, I worked with children and, and young adults um, with developmental delays and of, of all ranges. And then, you know, then when I worked with, um, with, with the elderly in a, um, a New York City facility um, back in the, in the 70s and 80s, there were huge hospitals where people would, would, would literally live for years. 
and you know that when you're in a large institution you you you're often sort of out or off in your own little space mm -hmm. especially if you have a, a developmental delay or schizophrenia any kind of mental disorder you're not connected to others you know marion chase who is was we, we she was the first president of the dance therapy association in america um you know she went worked with 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 uh, groups of men who came back from the war and were and we didn't know what ptsd was at that point but they had ptsd some of them couldn't talk and in the same way that i've experienced um my clients the developmental delayed or, or the elderly not being able to express themselves verbally so when you're bringing together a group of people who already feel disjointed disconnected alienated you have a real opportunity to help people connect with others mm -hmm. you know often in, in groups especially within hospital settings um, i will work in a circle because a circle is very egalitarian mm -hmm. you know everybody can see me i can see everybody else and the idea that that um we start with little movements right i put on some music that has a very very steady beat you know we're all seduced by rhythm we are that, that no matter uh, as long as we're alive even if we're moving a finger you put on a rhythmic movement a rhythmic a, a rhythmic um uh piece of music that has a very steady beat which is very organizing right so i know it's predictable and even the clients who feel very disconnected from others you'll see them starting to move a little bit and you'll see them some you know sometimes they'll just shake their head or sometimes it's a finger uh -huh. And I, as the dance therapist, can pick up that movement from them and we can all share that together. So I might say, you know, I'm noticing that everybody's moving their hands. Let's, let's all try that to the rhythm of the music. And before we know it, even the people who are feeling most alienated are beginning to do something with their bodies. When we start moving, we vitalize, we, the energy flows, those feel good hormones are beginning to work mm -hmm. um, because we're activating them with, with, with movement. Um, and then I sometimes, you know, if, we're, if we're, we're moving our hands, I'll ask somebody to, you know, um, make a gesture towards somebody else in the group, wave to somebody else in the group, wave to the person standing next to you. The group sense gives you an opportunity to see other people, to look at them, because ultimately we have to live in a social world. Exactly. And if we don't, and if we can't find a way to connect in the social world, we're going to have a hard time on the outside, right? Um, um, if, especially for many of the clients that I've worked with in the hospital. So that sense of group provides an opportunity of learning how to connect with others. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, I wave to you, I'm, I'm with you. I can see you, I can look. You know, many of the clients I work with, you know, their eyes are down and they're, they're looking inward as opposed to looking outward. The other thing is that when you begin to look outward, you begin to open up your body, you begin to breathe, you begin to loosen the tensions in your body. Even for those people who have most difficulty um, feeling that sense of, of connection to self, when they start to open up, when they start to breathe, you know, when we're, when we're trying to hold our emotions back, we stop breathing. Once we open up our chest and we look up and we wave to somebody else and we look to somebody else and we even shake, perhaps these days it's hard shaking hands with somebody, you know, touching somebody's elbow. It's, it's very, uh, it's, it's, it's energizing. Again, those feel good hormones are, mo are mobilized but but we're going from from um, from sort of the ritual of beginning the movement to it being a more therapeutic experience by way of I am connecting with others because I have to do that in the outside world and this is a way of learning how to do that. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? Yes, yes, and rhythm really binds people, you know. Yes. And also, like we see a lot of research talking about the benefits of movement, like increased body awareness, and also, as you said, um, connection with other people, 
you know, you have all these chemi chemical reactions in your body that will make you feel good. Uh, so there's all these new possibilities. Yes. And um, one word that you said is choreography. A dance could be a choreography of emotion. Uh, I thought yes. that was so beautiful. Yes, that is, that's what I, I remember saying that at the end of my speech. I, I, I actually, I said um, the dance therapy session is the choreography of the emotions yes. in the service of the clients. Yes. Because the dance therapist is using improvisation all the time. Mm -hmm. is, but, but, but the therapist is, um, is trained to, 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 um, to choreograph, to, to how, how shall I put it, to take the movements that the clients are giving you and developing them and choreographing them and allowing or encouraging a self-expression through the body. And sometimes, certainly not only through the body, but through symbols. You know, sometimes there are clients who have, I, I mentioned this in my video, you know, have a really hard time talking about how angry they are, right? But, they, but, but you can feel the tension in their bodies. And, and, you know, dance is a stress reliever. It's an anxiety reliever. Sometimes we have to go more deeply into that, 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 um, that sense of binding in order to release it. So we can help the client choreograph to improvise around the tension, to release it, to feel another emotion that is more expressive of how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. So the choreography of the emotions in the service of the client is what we're doing all the time because we're trying to ignite vitality, ignite aliveness from people who often feel deadened inside. And that's what one of the things that dance can really bring. You know, that sense of, of hope that, you know, that if it, when, when people feel that they can control their bodies or express themselves with their bodies, they often feel more connected to themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that if I'm encouraging and I'm, you know, I, I always have three rules in my sessions. Can't hurt yourself, can't hurt the equipment, can't hurt anybody else. Other than that, everything is acceptable. So, so, so I don't go into a session and say, we're going to do this, but I will put music on and encourage clients to move in a way that feels comfortable for them. And then to share those movements with other people when we're working in a group. Mm -hmm so that we are choreographing, we are enabling, we are using the improvisation that people are giving in order to be able to go more deeply into one's emotional life when, when you can. And if you can, sometimes symbolically representing, you know, that, you know, what does this feel like? What does this look like? What is this experience for you? And sometimes the symbol of, you know, that, 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 I feel like I'm, in, I'm, I'm, in, I'm tying myself in a knot. Well, tie yourself in a knot and then see if you can untie yourself from that knot. And that's, the, that's where the choreography and the improvisation comes in. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's picking up from, from the client and helping them to unravel. Un unraveling the knots. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> and the tensions. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that cannot put emotions into words. They have difficulty yeah. to express with words, but then they find it easily to move and express through movement or a posture. You know, it's another way of communicating. And um, it's very interesting when you said, I allow them to move freely. You know, there's no like you move like this or that. But all movements are welcome, you know, all possibilities are welcome. And then you encourage them from there, you know, to evolve to, you know, what, they, what he wants to express. Yes, yes. I'm always encouraging self-expression. Now, you know, I, long, long ago, I worked with, um, with a client who had great difficulty um, mobilized. She was, she was not catatonic, but she was very close to it you know that that so so it wasn't as if i could walk in i it was and and expect that we were going to begin to have a, a connection um because i really had to establish trust mm -hmm. because trust in the therapist is really essential and also trust that i'm going to be able to hold the environment in such a way that people will feel safe mm -hmm. um so that you know that not all not everybody feels safe moving they feel 
you know, not everybody wants to be, they feel that perhaps they're judged. So I, I need to always create that environment in which people are feeling as if they are being well taken care of. So this one, one client who I actually work with individually, um, she did not want me to be in the, in the room with her. And that was very clear because the, one of the very first gestures she did when I, when I walked in was, didn't talk to me, but she just really, so I worked with her for a, quite a long time, but gradually I would move closer. So I, were, I, I, I talked to her and um, actually in the, door, in the doorway of her room. And I actually would breathe with her. And sometimes I would put on music and I, we would just, I would just stand in the doorway and I would talk to her and I would just move my fingers until one day I saw her moving, tapping her toe yeah. and then I tapped my toe when the same rhythm, you know, weeks later. And, and at some point she looked up and she looked at me while she was tapping her toe. So, you know, that, that you need to move sometimes very slowly, very carefully. And I didn't, you know, I, I never said to her, you're not moving, you're not doing, it was always following her lead, taking on her movement, mirroring, dance therapists use a technique um, that's called mirroring. And we mirror back in order to reflect what the individual is doing in order to honor and validate that, that, that what they're doing is just fine. That's so beautiful. I mean, there's a lot of, um there's a lot of things that can come out of movement. There's a lot of possibilities. And that's what I want to, to show people that, you know, we that work with movement, I'm a physical therapist. When we think about movement, there's much more than just the, you know, the, the regular movement that we think, you know, to being fit or that, nothing wrong with that, but there's another and beautiful, vast, feel that we can act to heal people, to make people feel better, to, to make a connection so they feel that they belong to a group. And nowadays in Brazil, um, there's a, this big university, as a matter of fact, the one that I used to go, University of Sao Paulo, and they are doing a lot of research with movement and mental disorder people. And they want to show how movement can benefit these people. So it's very nice to hear from you, your experience, you know, all, all the possibilities that, you know, we can bring with movement. And it's really inspiring. I thank you so much for that. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, you know that there, 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 are, there have been many studies about um, the use of movement, about the importance of movement. One, one of the early studies um, that I remember reading in graduate school was about you know, a, a group of, of patients who were put on, a, who were depressed and put on a waiting list um, for psychotherapy. You know, half of the group, half of the group was just put on the waiting list. The other, they were, they were the control group. The other group was actually told to, or, or invited to uh, participate in physical activity. By the time the people's names who came up on the waiting list, those who were in the control group and had no physical activity were still depressed. Those who were um, mm -hmm. given, given a, on the waiting list, who were given the regimen of physical activity, were actually said you know, they weren't really sure that they needed to go to therapy anymore because they were feeling so much better. Again, the feel-good hormones. Mm -hmm. um, but there have been also studies about, in the same regard, for those put on, on a waiting list and those given dance lessons. And the people who were given dance lessons and asked and actually um, moving with a, with a partner, they were given ballroom dance lessons so that they were moving with a partner and they had to learn how to connect and, and, um, and be in synchrony with another person. When we're in synchrony with another person, we feel connected, we feel alive. Um, the people who took dance, again, felt much better than the people who were not given any dance classes. You know, because dance provides... Interestingly, um, it, it's a, there's, a, a, there's a lot of mental activity that goes on, um, especially if you're, if, if you're in a dance therapy session and you're following other people, right? You have to watch, you have to look, you have to coordinate your body with somebody else. Um, 
you you have to think about um, your memory. Um, you know, how much do I remember? How much am I gathering? How much am I getting? So there's a lot of cognition that goes into yeah. the work as well as you're working on balance, you're working on strength, you're working on endurance. Um, what you're working on in physical therapy, we're doing it from the perspective of dance. You know, sometimes by the end of a session, people are exhausted because they're <laughs> moving so much and they're dancing so much and they're paying so much attention. Um, but, but, it's a, but it's a great exhaustion. It's about exhilaration. It's about sense of self. It's about vitality. It's a sense of, of being present in your body with another person, yes. as well as, most importantly, a sense of being in your body with yourself. Exactly. Being safe within your body. Being safe within your body and being safe within a group led by a, a, a well-trained therapist yeah. who can help to choreograph the movement mm -hmm. that becomes improvised. Thank you very much. Um, just to wrap up our interview, would you like yes. to finish with a quote? Well, you know, I had a quote at the end of my, my speech um, that you saw. And this is what a dance therapist does. And it's, um, I wrote it um, actually for some publication for ADTA and uh, Dance Therapy Association. So the spark of life started with a movement and dance therapists use those sparks to ignite feelings in those whose lights, whose lives have dimmed. Yeah, I remember that. So beautiful. Thank you, Dr. Nana. I really appreciate your time. Thank you Thank very you. much. Because um, your, your lecture always impact, has a good impact on me. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I, hope you. You, and I hope you can inspire lots of Brazilians here. here. Well, when, 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 the, uh, when, the, when the, the sheltering in place is lifted, invite me and I'll come and I'll visit. <laughs> I will, I will. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. I'm very moved that you asked me to, to participate. Thank you.